Hey everybody, this is Danny Urbine from Marbin. Um, well, first of all, I'm glad everybody dug that Gypsy Jazz stuff. And I've been getting questions about the right hand technique that's involved in playing this style of music. And I just want to break down what exactly I do, which is exactly what Django did and what all the decent gypsy or G decent and good gypsy jazz players do. It's the same technique. Um, back there in the background is Danny Markovic. Say hi, Danny. Hey, there we go. All right. So um, this is what we're going to do. The first thing is the curvature of the hand is different. Now, when I play Strat I th and, you know, when I do the Marbin stuff, I'm about half and half. I think maybe 60% of the time I play with a straight wrist like this. But the gypsy technique comes from this curve. You see it? So when you're dead on, it looks like this. When you tilt to the side, you get this angle. Okay? So the, the one thing that's really important to remember, by the way, this is how Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan played when they played blues, too. You see this angle a lot. Um, so in the motion of gypsy jazz is identical to putting out a match. Okay? So that's, that's a good, that's the, it's not really a metaphor, it's identical, it's, it's really what you do. Imagine that the pick, you know, you're just applying enough pressure to hold it, and then the whole thing shakes. Now, there are a few, more, few other things you need to know. When you attack the string, you see the angle of the pick? It's totally, um, there's no angle sideways to the pick against the string, I mean this way. So the pick is dead on, not this way, not tilted like Paul Gilbert style or Sean Lance or G George Benson like this. It's hitting it at 90 degrees. But you do have a forward slant, okay? You see this? It's 45 degrees this way. Now this is extremely important because this technique is built on downstrokes. And not only downstrokes, rest strokes. So what's a rest stroke? The whole idea is that you wind the hand up and then you go through the string and rest on the next string, like so. This gives you the volume, okay? There's really three types of strokes in gypsy jazz. There's the rest stroke, the up stroke, which is a reaction to the rest stroke to get back, and then sometimes you have what they call the half rest stroke, which is, a, it's, it looks like a rest stroke, but instead of resting, you flick your wrist and go back up. Okay, so all this stuff, what's it good for? It's a mecha, it, really it, it evolved to get more volume out of lines, okay? So when Django Reinhardt played, he didn't have amps. So the thing that people associate with, uh, with the technical style is uh, this rule of switching, whenever you switch strings, you do it with downstrokes. So, in one direction, it's either sweep picking and alternate picking, and then in the other direction, it's either alternate picking or just playing this weird motion, which is like, you know, if you're playing three notes per string, then ascending, it's like down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. So that's kind of like what people call economy picking. But the other direction, it's down, up, down, down. So that's kind of unnatural if you're not used to that. But how do you achieve the motion? So it's a rest stroke, up stroke, half rest stroke. Rest stroke, up stroke, half rest stroke. See that? So, um, so that could be tricky if you're not used to doing that, but you have to think about it as three separate motions. Now, what you see with a lot of people who don't have good, good uh, gypsy technique is they'll tense up. And once this joint is tense, you can't do any of this stuff. It's all built around this momentum type technique. You know, it's like with a lot of gravity built into the motion. So when you're playing this kind of style, to get the volume, you have to be very, very loose. And the tricky thing is that, you know, a lot of players, even, even great technical players like Joshua Stefan or something, will kind of keep a hand or like keep two fingers touching the bottom of the guitar. He kind of slides them behind here. Uh, there's actually few people that don't touch the, I don't touch the guitar at all. I just glide. Uh, Jimmy Rhodes does the same thing, kind of spreads his fingers like this. Um, so 
the thing is, if you're not touching the guitar with any part of your right hand except for the pick and where it's making the connection here, it could be tricky in the beginning to know which string you're playing because you're just kind of coming th from the air and then landing right into the string you want to land into. Um, a good way to start practicing that is just practicing playing rest strokes on each string. And rest strokes with this kind of angle, you see 45 degrees, and going up in the air and through the string. Now, mechanically, it's so good to play um, this forward pick slant because you're never trapped between two strings. If the pick was straight, on the down angle, you'd collide with this string, and on the up angle, you'd collide with this one. Since it's at this angle, down, you're going into the next string and resting, and up, you're going away from the guitar. Now, when you're in the away position, you can come back and land on any string. So, like, you know, bouncing all over, all over the, you know, landing on whichever string is not an issue technically because you're just kind of going up and you can land wherever. Um, so that song I played in the last video. So what, whatever, I mean, I can, I can keep going. But uh, the idea technically is just being able to play lines fluidly. Now, I'm not even talking about like the harmonic language um, that goes into playing this jazz kind of stuff. Uh, for me personally, I've been playing gypsy jazz about two and a half years before that. I mean, I come from fusion and, you know, other forms of jazz. But, you know, the for, in my playing, the scale part of it and the note part of it and the rhythm part of it was kind of together, but the technical part was missing, you know? And I'm just talking about the technique purely. And the left-hand technique is very similar to playing any other style of music. There's really not, the vibrato is a little bit different, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. But the right hand is night and day. And, you know, the only thing that it's kind of similar to is maybe Hendrix, maybe Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, to get that aggressive sound, you know, digging into the lines. But I think it's a great, a great way to learn how to get a sound out of an acoustic instrument that's loud. You know, it's much louder than like, let's say, a bluegrass player that does like cross picking and kind of, you know, this motion where it, this digs in, I think, the most. You know, it's definitely the loudest you can, you can play. And people play with thick picks. This one's like 2.5 millimeters. And, but it's all about the rest stroke, being able to kind of dig in. And resting with this kind of motion. You see that? the up stroke, and then the half rest stroke. Now, I want to be clear about the half rest stroke. You use the half rest stroke to basically get into a rest stroke, okay? So, if I'm playing a descending line that let's say has, you know, one note per string, like F, F arpeggio, F major arpeggio. So, I'm gonna use these half rest strokes, okay? If I'm going the other way, I'm gonna use rest strokes, and that's kinda like a sweep. No. See that? So those are half rest strokes. Da -da 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 -da. Um, so I mean, it gives you like a percussive sound. And, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to it, except, you know, keep really loose and don't give up this motion. It's impossible to play this style of music with a, with a flat wrist like most people are taught to play or with, you know, this kind of palm muting mentality in it. You can play the, you can play the notes and you can play the rhythms, but it won't sound the same. Uh, and I think to me playing, you know, playing different styles of music is about making them sound a certain way. And the sound of this style is that percussive thing that you put into the guitar. So um, I hope this helps. And uh, 
comment if you have any questions. I'll be glad to answer them. And if you want uh, further instruction about any of this stuff. So thanks so much. And uh, join us at facebook.com slash Marvin Music or marvinmusic.com. And uh, we just finished a new record called Goatman in the House of the Dead. You guys should definitely check that out. Right? Yeah, it's good shit. All right. So we'll see you next time. And uh, I'm Danny Rabin. Bye-bye.